ladies and gentlemen, is the new 992 series GT3. Uh, we've been waiting for this car for a while, and now that it's here, well, it's got a bit more power, it weighs a tiny bit more, but it seems very much the same sort of thing. So before we have a proper go around this track that we've got here, let's just pull over and have a quick look at the details. This is the bit of the video where I have to talk technical. And I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen, there is really quite a lot of technical stuff to get through. So what I thought we'd do is just deal with it in sections so that we can better understand each individual area of what this car does. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is aero, because I guess when you look at the car, that's what you see, that's what appears to be most changed about the car. Now, starting here at the front, uh, we have this very deep front chin spoiler. What you can't see is underneath it, there is an all new diffuser, um, which actually does really clever stuff in the way that it manages the airflow around the wheel arch, which hasn't been done on any previous GT3. You then got these uh, side skirts and this enormous swan neck rear spoiler. It's the first time that Porsche has done a spoiler like this on the back of the car. And the reason the struts go and mount on top rather than underneath is it's actually the underside of the wing that does the most work. That way it makes sure that the airflow is least restricted where it's most needed. In total, if you put the wing up and you adjust it at the front, this car will produce about 385 kilograms of downforce, which is a lot. I mean, a McLaren P1 has 600 kilograms, I think a Senna has 800 kilograms. So it's not kind of hypercar levels of downforce, but it's enough to make the car really, really stable in the fast stuff, which frankly is what you want. Lesson number two, suspension. I wish I could show you this because it's actually the key to the car. Uh, behind this is not the McPherson strut that has sat behind the wheels of every single 911 since the first one appeared on a show stand in 1963. It's a proper double wishbone front suspension unit. And it's been done because they have found that it produces an entirely new level of response and precision to the car. And it is that more than anything else. If you take one lesson away from this, it is that the front suspension on this car changes this car in a way no other GT3 has been changed before. It is much more of a weapon. It's less of a plaything, if I'm honest with you. You know, if you just want to go hooning around doing big skids, you're probably better off than the old one. But if you want to go fast, if you actually want to feel those sort of almost quasi race car levels of response, or as close to them as you can get with something which still has to have proper ride height and treaded tires, this front suspension makes all the difference. And you notice it on the road too. It's actually, it's a bit busier on the road than I was expecting, possibly even a bit busier than, than I would like. But the precision, again, that you get, which means the ability to place the car, this being now quite a big wide car, is so important. And it's basically all down to what is going on behind that tire. At the rear, we have the same multi-link suspension that you get on a normal 992, but they've been through it completely. They have recalibrated everything. Obviously you have adjustable roll bars. Uh, you can change the ride height. You can change the toe angle. You can change the camber. You know, it's fully adjustable in the way that GT3s have always been. It's also got, final thing before I forget, the rear wheel steer, which is standard on this car, as it was on the last car, has been completely reprogrammed too. The next thing we need to talk about is the weight of this car. Now the bad news, viewers, is that it's gone up five kilograms, which isn't very much. Usually when cars, new versions of old cars come out, they always seem to have gone up 50 kilograms or whatever, five kilograms. And the reason for that is this is a physically bigger car than the last one, particularly it's got the wide body on it. It's got the wishbone front suspension. It's got that big, there's lots of quite heavy stuff on it. So in actually, if you think about it, if they hadn't done anything to mitigate that, it wouldn't be five kilograms more, it'd be about 45 kilograms heavier. So they've done all sorts of things to make the car a lot lighter. They have, for instance, got rid of a load of the sound deadening. It's got thinner glass in it. This bonnet here is now made from carbon fiber reinforced plastic. The brake discs, although they're bigger, they're thinner. So they've been right through the car. Um, at the back end of it, in the exhaust system, they've lost 10 kilograms out of weight without having to do a sort of full titanium system. And somewhere within the engine, they found another six kilograms of weight to come out of the car as well. There's just an awful lot of stuff on this, which makes it lighter. And that is before you start getting into the optional stuff, which this car has like the PCCB ceramic brakes and this carbon fiber reinforced plastic roof that you've got here. Actually, one of the least changed parts of this car is the flat six motor that is underneath this one. You can't even open it anymore, so you can't see what I'm looking at. But it is essentially the same four-litre engine that was in 
the previous car. However, they have found another 10 horsepower out of it, so it now has 503 brake horsepower at 8,250 revs. Amazing for a 4-litre engine without a turbocharger anywhere near it. And it is, Porsche say, essentially the same engine that they use in their Carrera Cup racing car. I've driven a Cup car, uh, and I've now driven this, and when they say that, I absolutely believe it. The best thing to say about this car is it's very noisy. This car may look like the last one, but it's not like the last one at all. So forget the last, the 991 Gen 2 generation of GT3. The engine's the same, but the big difference, what has completely transformed this car, is the way the suspension and the aerodynamics now work. So if you look at it on paper, you won't see a great deal of difference. The performance figures are very similar. Um, 3.4 seconds to 62, seven seconds to 100, top speed 198 with this EDK gearbox. Don't worry, the manual is coming. So on paper, so what? In reality, everything. The night and day difference with this car is the front suspension. It's the first road going 911 ever to have double wishbone front suspension and the RSR, the Le Mans car 911, um, is the only other one that has had it uh, and it just, it totally changes the car and mainly for the good. There will be people who think that this car is less playful as a result because to be honest it's much more capable. You can't muck about with it in the same way that you could with the last one. You can't just sort of chuck it in and sort it out. It's not really what the car wants to do. The car just wants to go fast. So what the double wishbone front suspension brings is a completely new level of precision to this car. You, honestly, you can feel it when you're driving around the car, but just the way the steering interacts, it just feels so much more responsive. It feels so much more sharp. Out on the road, I'm not actually convinced that with this suspension setup, which is twice as stiff at the front as the previous GT3, and I think it might actually be a bit too hardcore for, for people who want to use these cars as daily drivers. And what I'm hoping is that the Touring version, which is coming, we think, late this year, will actually have its suspension settings backed off a little bit, just to make it that little bit more usable on the road. But on the track, oh my goodness. I mean, people talk about, you know, racing cars for the road and that sort of thing. It's not that. but. It's, it's kind of as close as you would imagine a road car on road tyres, you know, based on something which has rear seats and has a boot and lots and lots of practical stuff, is going to be. It really is... I mean, it's just a completely it's a complete eye opener. I'm sort of stumbling over my words here because I know how 911s should feel, and this doesn't feel like that. It's not any worse. On the contrary, it's better, but it is so different. Um, the other thing which I should talk about is the aero. Now, this car, with the wing in its maximum setting and also set by the change in the diffuser at the front, it generates 385 kilos of downforce, which is significant. That's a lot of weight sitting on the car. Now, it's not enough to kind of, you know, make your cheeks ripple and, you know, do that sort of thing. It's not like race car levels of downforce. But what it can do, particularly on a track like this at Bedford, is it just, it makes the car feel much more settled in the quick stuff. What that does is it breeds confidence, and what you need in a car like this more than anything else is confidence. Because you know these sorts of cars, they are so fast these days that even if you know they've got huge amounts of grip, if you're not confident driving the car, not only will you not go fast, not only will you not be able to exploit their grip, much more importantly, you won't be having any fun either. So you know, in the quick stuff, it brings fantastic levels of confidence, and in well, everywhere, but particularly in the slow corners, those double wishbones at the front, plus completely reconfigured rear suspension and four-wheel steering. Yeah, it brings the 911 GT3 to a whole new level. And I guess the one question that leaves remaining is, if this car is this good, what's the GT3 RS going to be like? Ooh.